in 1993, Monroe experienced what they called a downburst. Now that's different from a tornado. <laughs> the only way it's different from a tornado, in my understanding, is that a tornado, the winds go in one direction, and a downburst, the winds go in another direction. But essentially, it's the same kind of storm. It's just different rotation of winds. So the main part, downtown Monroe was hit pretty hard. Um, but it's funny how tornadoes are their specific and their path. And my house, I didn't suffer <laughs> at all. Uh, not the house. The yard, there were just a few limbs, no big major limbs or anything like that. I did hear, I was in the house, and I don't know what I was doing. I think maybe sitting watching television or just messing around, but I did hear a strong wind. I live just one street over from Spring, and we had 10 roofs from uh, Spring Street buildings land in our yard, and we lost a cedar tree. And would you believe we replaced it with a maple, and recently we lost a maple in the uh, hurricane that came through Monroe. So I said, Lord, I get the message, I'm planting grass. <laughs> I, I got through the storm with really nothing much more than the lights going out. So, but all around me, because the storm went like this, it, went, it would hit the ground, tear everything up, then it'd go up, and touch nothing. And then he'd come down and hit the ground again. So luckily I was was not physically devastated. I mean all the lights were out all over town. And, and, and the wind, I would just guess, was probably 75, 80 miles an hour. And it, it started down Spring Street and it came right through Monroe. And, and I knew what was going on. Couldn't see it, but I, I could hear it and I knew what was happening. And of course the next day, the city became alive and everybody was finding out, uh, like the furniture store, forced forest, just totally level it. I mean, it's, nothing was higher than that. The then mayor, Harry Knight, um, decided it would be a good thing to celebrate the fact that Monroe had recovered from the storm. Um, a lot of the damage had been repaired and people were happy about that. So he wanted to have a, a town celebration and he called it the Jubilee. And he called and asked me if I would be responsible for getting up uh, an art show. And we decided the place to have it would be in the yard of the McDaniel Titchener House. So I, at that time I was teaching a class at the senior center, a uh, senior center, and <clears throat> so to get up a, a group of artists for the art show, the first thing I thought, well, my students, the people who were uh, working with me at the center. Well, we had a um, group of ladies, probably six or eight, that gathered at the senior center, and we had an art class there. It was taught by Sally Jones, and Sally got sick, and so she couldn't teach the class any longer. And so we had to recruit someone. And so I hadn't lived here real long, a few years, and didn't know too many people. But someone suggested Susan Pelham. So I called Susan and talked to her about teaching our class. And she seemed a little bit hesitant, but she agreed to do it. And she was wonderful. She, she, she came, I think we had, um, it was only once a week, and it was a couple hours, you know. And, um, and we still met at the senior center. And um, anyway, we all loved Susan, and I kind of think that that was the nucleus of the Art Guild because that's where it kind of all started. The old Johnson Institute was where they were holding these classes. So I went down there to teach, and Lois Reicheldurfer was in the class, Arlene Mitchum was in the class, Betty Hearn was in the class, um, Gloria Potter was in the class. 
So it was a, it was a nice group. There's some other people who are in there, and uh, their names don't come to me right off the bat. But anyway, those form the core people who did the show at the McDaniel Titchener House. And then I reached out to other people. I knew Bill Barnes, so I asked Bill if he'd participate. And um, anybody else I could think of that I knew was involved in the arts, I tried to get them involved. Susan knew some local artists, and they uh, participated as well. And so it was, it was a great show, and everybody was excited about it, and we had a great attendance and everything. I don't know if anybody sold anything, but that didn't matter. You know, it was just nice to have people look at your paintings. And we just had such a terrific turnout that as we were taking the show down, we were all commenting about what a shame it was to have that many artists and not have some avenue for the people to show their art, but also to increase the interest of the art here in Monroe. And as we were taking everything down, there were some of us still standing around um, talking, and Bill came up with the idea. He said, you know, it's a shame to have all this art together and all these artists together and then just everybody go back home and not and not pursue some kind of um, organization. We saw that this was an opportunity, particularly when we found the post office was in tatters. I mean the roofs had fallen in and Susan knew the mayor and I said, well, let's go talk to him. She said, all right, we will. I said, well, I'll call Harry Knight <coughs> and ask him. <coughs> and I did. And Harry said, well, I just, I've already promised that building to Knox Bell uh, to be used for fish, which is Faith in Serving Humanity, which is a um, group of the churches, local churches, getting together to help people in need. And I said, well, you know, this is a right downtown building with all these aesthetics. It had beautiful marble. It had uh, wrought iron. It was a lovely building. And I thought that Fish could use almost any building, but an art guild needed a building that spoke to the aesthetic. So and I told Harry that. And Harry said, well, you'll have to talk to Knox and work it out with him. And I said, okay. I know when we, we uh, Susan was also the one that managed to get the post office. Um, they had already promised it to someone else for uh, the fish, which is local charity. And I think she talked him out of it. And, and Arlene Mitchum came up with a grocery store that maybe they could use, and that's the way it worked. They agreed to take the grocery store and we got to the post office. But when we went in the post office, I think a lot of us, and I was one of them, I thought, oh my word, you know, this is a shambles here. The water came into the second floor, went through the second floor floor, dropped all the ceilings on the first floor, and filled up the basement with water. So it was a matter of repairing all of this. And when we got our organization, we used those people as much as we could, because some of it we had to get real live carpenters and electricians, and, you know, professional people. But we got the building back in shape. There again, Susan and I guess Bill could visualize the possibilities of the place, and so that, that worked out real well. They, um, well, we cleaned that up, you know, with, <laughs> it was broken glass and fallen plaster and broken, oh, it was a mess. But anyway, everybody worked hard and um, got it back in shape. We were so happy to receive it. It's a lovely building. If no one's been in it, they should go. And uh, so we started cleaning, which there was quite a task at that. But we all had a good time doing it, knowing what we were going to receive afterwards. I think the Art Guild has been really big in town because it has 
we, we had, um, well, we painted a wall in the library. We were asked by the school, Walker School, to come and paint a wall there in their cafeteria. Then the town was going to tear down a building that's right across from the, um, it's on Spring Street, right across from the uh, cemetery. And it was an eyesore and it was going to be a while before it was torn down. So we volunteered to decorate it and fix it up, make it look nicer. And it looked really, really good. We painted these great big flowers on it and uh, we had fun. And that was Betty. Betty Hearn was there, and uh, Lois Reicheldurfer, and and um, Gloria Potter, and Wanda Hickman, and I'm sure there are others too. And I probably shouldn't have mentioned any of those names since I can't <laughs> remember everybody who was there. But we did. Um, we worked really hard, but had so much fun doing it, and it looked really good when we got done. I think some people maybe thought it was too. Um, flower power issue, <laughs> but um, it was fun anyway. They have sponsored lectures and um, slide presentations and so on at the Guild itself, and they have had shows for the schools as well as the artists that were members, and they have had um, open house for for the people you know when we have a show the members uh, have to pay to have the paintings in the show but the members the the admission is free so anybody in town can come and I and I know they have really good attendance at the show so that's that's good too so I, I think that the the art guild has been a, a great benefit to the community and it has kind of been the precursor to some other things too, like the Music Guild. By having shows and people coming here, you just can't imagine how many people we brought in uh, to see the art, but also became members of the Art Guild. So they contributed quite a bit to the city. Uh, and then, as uh, Lois said, other things came after it and opening up wonderful buildings for not just art, but other displays. And we painted all over town. We painted for the senior citizens. We painted for Walker Park School. We painted a wall downtown. And have just done a lot of community projects to promote the arts as well. So it's been a fun experience. And we've made some great friends. We really have. When you work together, you, you uh, pretty much stay together as friends too. So I take no credit. I just uh, followed the lead, and Susan has always been the one that's been the leader to me.